Hey YouTube, this is Jeff Lieber, founder of Turnkey Product Management. In today's episode, we talk with John Tucker, who is the CEO of Helpflow.com. And Helpflow provides 24-7 live chat teams to lots of companies out there. And what that does is helps people to drive sales and drive higher conversion rates. So today we have a very special guest. It is John Tucker and him and I have been friends for a few years now. We both live in San Diego and I've actually learned a ton from John over the years and I wanted to pick his brain today. So John, why don't you kick it off and just tell us a little bit about your background. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Jeff. I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm the CEO at helpflow.com. Uh, we provide 24 seven live chat teams to e-commerce stores. Uh, what that means is uh, it's our team of, of actual humans uh, answering questions live on our client's website 24 hours a day um, and ultimately driving more sales. Um, been doing this for about five years, uh, hundreds of clients, millions of chats, lots of revenue for our clients. And uh, so we've uh, built a great team, good business, and, and really found our footing over the last couple of years and uh, just been focused on growth. Uh, business came out of my marketing agency. And so uh, Jeff and I share a similar background. Um, of understanding, you know, a whole bunch of aspects of uh, client marketing and that side of things. Um, but yeah, that's the business we're in is uh, 24 seven live chat teams for e-com stores. Nice. So basically it's like a plugin on the website, like not, it's not actual like automated chat, like chat bots, but actual live people. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, exactly. Like it's uh, basically a lot of e-commerce stores, they already use live chat. Uh, the difference with us is, you know, we obviously give you the software, which is great, um, but there's hundreds of live chat softwares out there. Uh, the difference with us is it's an actual staffed team of human agents uh, that are answering questions for your visitors. So it makes it really simple uh, for a business to have 24 seven live chat coverage um, right out of the gate. You know, it's really, you know, turnkey service, uh, pun intended there, I guess. Uh, so our team of humans can really be available to answer those questions. Awesome. And so I know that from talking to you, one of your key areas of expertise is basically around like conversion optimization, whether it's on a website, on a Shopify store, on any, any website. And, and this can also be applied to Amazon as well. Some of these, you know, uh, attributes will be applied to both any landing page essentially. So, um, what are some of the like top lessons that people can apply to their business? Yeah. So, um, we started to notice patterns in doing uh, chat for a lot of e-com stores. Um, I mentioned, you know, we've done millions of chats over five years, which, which blows my mind. I remember when it was like one or two clients and a hundred chats in a day was like crazy for us. Um, but over those tons of chats, like we started to see really clear patterns um, of what causes people to actually buy or, or not buy um, on the website. And the way that we've kind of noticed those is because chat really, you know, fits into the overall conversion optimization process. Um, you know, one of the things that we've done is, uh, we, we predict when people are likely to abandon their shopping cart, uh, or abandon the purchase process. Uh, and we engage with those people. And so we start to see why they're abandoning. We can see, you know, uh, the types of questions they're asking, um, and ultimately try to get better and better at predicting when somebody's going to abandon. Um, then also, um, you know, once we have that conversation going and we answer their question, we basically drive them forward uh, through the purchase process. And so, you know, we've been able to see uh, a lot of patterns um, of why people abandon. And, you know, I jotted down some notes um, kind of coming into our call um, around what some of those patterns are. And um, there's obvious CRO things that you should do on your website. Um, but I tried to pull out, you know, three or four uh, kind of non-obvious ones based on what we see, you know, happen in the chat. Um, and so as I was going through these, one of the things I noticed is a lot of it actually applies, Jeff, to, to uh, the way Amazon does things. And I know, you know, a big chunk of your client base is Amazon sellers. Um, there's a lot of lessons I think we can learn from, you know, Amazon.com, biggest, biggest, one of the biggest sites in the world. Um, and you can apply those um, to a normal e-com store. So, um, one of the things that I've seen is streamlining the checkout process, like really making the checkout process really, really simple. Um, and there's a couple ways that we've seen work really well for that. Um, the first one is, is pretty basic. Um, and that's asking for like the minimum amount of information that you need for an actual purchase. 
Um, so for example, if you know, you're asking for a ton of different information in your fields, like phone number, for example, uh, if you're not going to call them or text them or do something, you know, magical in your conversion process with that phone number, don't ask for the phone number. Um, a lot of stores, they just keep the default fields and, you know, we watch people throughout the purchase process and we can see what fields they're on. And like a lot of people, uh, they, they get halfway through a form and they just bail. Um, so the less, less, the better, that's, you know, kind of basics, um, for conversion optimization. Um, another one of streamlining the checkout is auto populating the address. Um, this is a, a little bit technical depending on what cart, uh, what cart you're on. Um, but when you're typing in the shipping address, just like on Google maps, and you can actually use the Google API for this, um, auto populating the shipping address. So when I start typing in, you know, my shipping address here in San Diego, um, it knows my address, it knows my patterns, it knows where I'm at from the API, and it just pre-populates that shipping address once I type, you know, four or five characters rather than the entire thing. Uh, so that can help a lot. That just kind of, again, streamlines the process and, and speeds people up. Uh, and then the last one is having, you know, a persistent shopping cart, um, making it so that, you know, when somebody comes back to the site later, you remember, um, you remember the actual shopping cart uh, and what they were buying. Um, so that there's that consistency when they come back. Um, those I think are some of the basics of, of streamlining the checkout process. Um, I've got a couple other ones, but does that make sense? Uh, you want me to kind of dig deeper into any of those? Yeah, it makes sense to me. So basically you're saying that it sounds one of the biggest areas is probably the card abandon sequence. Like they're starting to fill out either their credit card or some form of info, but then they bail because they, for whatever reason. So how are you guys able to basically stop that and, and mitigate that like immediately? Yeah, yeah, so, so what we do is we basically predict when somebody's going to abandon or likely to abandon, and then we invite them to chat um, you know, at that perfect time before they abandon. Uh, so to give you some examples, um, you, know, you can look in analytics, in Google Analytics, how long people spend in the actual checkout process. So within the checkout process, you can track how long people spend um, and if somebody spends more and more and more time in the checkout process, they're getting more and more likely to abandon. Uh, you can also track uh, what patterns people take uh, within the checkout process. You can see you know, what fields they're in. Uh, are they going back to a field that they already filled out before? Is there one field that's causing them not to be able to move forward? So you can kind of look at some of those patterns. Um, and then the key is basically to use that data to basically predict you know, this person's likely to bail here in a moment. Uh, and then we invite them to chat. Uh, within the actual checkout process. And so our chat box pops up very minimal on the, on the bottom of the site and says, you know, do you have any questions I can help with? Um, we use different greetings at different times, but very low pressure greeting to say, you know, is there anything I can help with? And they go, actually, yes. You know, I'm wondering if it's going to arrive on time with this shipping, uh, shipping option or something. Hmm. Uh, and so we're trying to just predict based on data when they're likely to abandon and then just be there, uh, be there to answer some questions and, you know, uh, move that sale forward. And, you know, we've been successful doing that by just being methodical with helping people at the perfect time. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Okay, so question that comes to mind, and this will apply to a lot of, even if you don't have chat, is because a lot of Amazon sellers will hire you know, a customer service representative that is not familiar with their business, and maybe they just start out part-time to help answer their Amazon buyer messages. And a big hurdle to that that we see over and over with our clients is that they need to basically understand the brand, the products, the customer, the problems. And, you know, so sometimes there's like FAQs, you try to build trainings for them, but uh, it can be really hard to train anybody to do that. And, you know, so what, what are your tips for, for that sort of issue? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the process we use to onboard our clients can can be used uh, for training a new employee because, you know, we partner really deeply with our clients. Um, and so we're, we're essentially operating like a, like a frontline employee. We're representing the brand. Um, so one of the things that we do is we have clients go through a really detailed onboarding form uh, that basically gathers a ton of information really efficiently. Um, for example, things around, you know, shipping policies, return policies, all those types of things. It's all multi-choice answers um, because we know, you know, regardless of what you sell, 
Um, international shipping policies are typically like one of these two or three answers. Uh, so it's very fast to gather all that information. Um, the equivalent of if you were training a CS person would be, you know, think through that stuff for your business um, and basically make sure you have answers to all of those types of questions, uh, you know, in your knowledge base. Uh, so that's the first thing we do is we pull in a whole bunch of information. We also get access, you know, to the client's uh, live chat system if they already have one, to their email tickets, um, to any sort of a customer support system that they already have. So we can really like take it all in, provide structure to that information and, and build a knowledge base. So, you know, our learning process is to build a really strong knowledge base about the client's business that our team can use. Uh, and I think for people that are hiring CS people, um, you know, we've used it to, to learn the CS process for hundreds of e-com stores. Um, so you could absolutely use it uh, to train your own team. Gotcha. No, that makes perfect sense. So you basically would give them as much info and details and make them study it and learn it. You're, you know, a customer service representative or your team member. And then once they learn those basics, then trying to give them templates and, and probably it evolves over time, right? The common FAQs that you might get. So it probably is not a set it and forget it, but it's probably evolving over time or. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, in our process, uh, we build up that initial knowledge base, we get ready to launch. Uh, and then once we launch, we're constantly updating that knowledge base. And so, um, you know, one thing we do is if we can't answer a question, uh, which does happen, uh, you know, we refer that over to the client um, and it's done in a very seamless, natural feeling way uh, for the website visitor. But we refer that over to the client uh, typically as an email ticket. Uh, client answers the question like they would any other email ticket, uh, but they BCC our system, our email address um, on that response, and that actually updates the knowledge base for the future. Um, and so that's something you can do to make sure like if, if your team can't handle something, um, answer it and help them, but do it in a way where they can help themselves next time. So that's a, that's a key part of the way that, you know, we constantly improve that knowledge base of how we run chat. Yeah, I can, I can remember in my, one of, like in my first business when I finally hired a customer service person and, you know, they would email me questions like, oh, I'm not sure what to do here. And then I would just take ownership of, of that and I would respond directly to the customer and just because I knew how to solve it in an instant. It just seemed shorter and faster to do that. But then I wouldn't, yeah, I wasn't smart enough to even share that you know, what, what was my response and what should you do next time in training that person? And so, you know, after like seven times in a row of them asking the same question, I'm like, hmm, maybe there's a breakdown on my side where I'm not training them on what they should do. So. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> cool. So what are some other like conversion insights or uh, just tips that people can apply to their Amazon or, or to their website? Yeah, I think this is one that would work on uh, on Amazon pages, but also on e-com, uh, is having what I call high level and low level product content. Um, when people are on your site, they want to learn about your products quickly, learn about your policies quickly, like kind of just browse through while they're going through the purchase process. Um, but in certain cases, they also want to dig in to a lot of details and be able to, you know, really understand you know, super detailed information about, um, you know, the quality of your jewelry, for example, uh, a client that comes to mind is a jewelry client, a uh, higher end jewelry client. And, you know, one of the things that uh, one, their buyers want to know is if it's like really high quality product that they're buying, either expensive uh, pieces of jewelry. Uh, and so they want to emphasize their industry leading quality, you know, directly on the product pages. Um, and so what we typically recommend for this is, you know, emphasize what the key pain point is or the key thing that the visitor cares about. Uh, for example, the quality, uh, you know, industry leading quality standards, for example, and then maybe have like one to two sentences max that summarizes like what that means, right? What are the quality standards? Um, and if somebody wants a lot more detail of like your entire you know, diamond grading process, for example, in, in jewelry, um, link to a full blog post or link to a, an article that really digs into like the whole process with pictures and everything. Um, the way that we learn that is you can't put a ton of information like uh, up in front on the website. You don't want to put like that entire blog post about industry leading quality, like directly on the product page with like paragraphs of information. Uh, but some people want that. 
And so what we do in the chat is, you know, we answer those questions about industry leading quality and what that means. But then if somebody wants to really dig in, you know, we show them the buyer's guide or we show them, uh, you know, deeper content about that. You can do the same thing on your product pages where, you know, you highlight certain things, maybe two or three key things about the product, uh, summarize what that means underneath them, and then maybe offer a little highlight pop up uh, that if somebody hovers their mouse over it, you know, it tells them the full story of, you know, 500 words of what quality means. Um, so having high and low level content is really, really important. And I think um, at least from a buyer's perspective for me on Amazon, um, I really appreciate when I can look at the product, look at the title, look at the reviews, uh, at the, the rating of the reviews um, and say, okay, I'm, I'm probably in. But if I have a detailed question, like I can use their search functionality. I can look at the Q and A, I can look at reviews. Um, that's part of why Amazon's Amazon is they have so much perspective from so many different buyers that like, if you're buying a semi-established product on Amazon, like everything you need is within that page. Um, you can do the same thing on your e-com store. And frankly, you can do it better than Amazon does uh, because you can control so much more of the experience rather than on Amazon. It's fairly defined uh, how it's laid out. Yeah. So how could you build that search functionality in on the website side? Because it is nice that you can search the customer questions on Amazon or the reviews for like whatever, like, warranty or battery life, you know, for, for terms that you're looking for and then pull up that info. So is there like a simple non techie way to get that on your website? Uh, it depends. Um, you know, there's Shopify plugins you can use that, you know, show FAQs on the pages. Um, you know, there's review functionality that, that enables you to, uh, you know, showcase reviews and enable people to filter them. Um, what we see happen is a lot of that happens on the chat where people will, you know, ask an initial question about warranties and then they'll go into, you know, quality specs or quality will kind of come up in the discussion. Um, and so we kind of end up being, I think, the filter on, on our clients' websites for that. Um, but the clients that I've seen do well with it are ones that basically, uh, you know, they do similar to Amazon where they enable you to filter the reviews and to filter, you know, the different um, content assets that are on the site. That's what I've, I've seen the most savvy clients do is have, try to replicate what they're doing on Amazon, but in a better UI. Yeah. Gotcha. So I'm trying to think like if, if for someone that's listening that maybe doesn't have, you know, hundreds or thousands of reviews on their website and it might take them a long time to get that. I'm trying to think, would it be easier for them just to kind of make more of like a Q and a like commonly asked questions or frequently asked questions and then answer all those things themselves. So even though they don't have the reviews for the searchability, like they can design what are the top questions and the best ways yeah. to answer them. Is that like a simple way to start? Yeah. So what I usually recommend is FAQs is one. And then like a buyer's guide type of content is another one. Um, for the FAQs, a lot of our clients actually use our FAQ process to generate those FAQs, like our onboarding process. Because the output of that onboarding process for new clients is like 80 to 100 uh, FAQs about the client's business. And it's based on their actual business. Um, and so that's a really good way to do it is to, you know, come up with the list of FAQs and then basically populate those yourself, um, you know, as, as somebody in the business. Um, another hack that, that works well, um, is if you don't have a ton of content or you're not sure what enough of the FAQs are, or if you don't have good data, like go back on and see those FAQs, um, looking for, uh, looking for similar products on Amazon, um, similar products as yours. And then looking at the uh, FAQs there uh, is a great way to like mine Amazon essentially um, for the questions people ask. And if you want to get like one level deeper, you can read through reviews on Amazon, uh, other people's reviews and pull questions out of that, for example. Um, so best bet for, for e-com stores is, is typically to start by focusing on FAQs that you think people are going to ask and creating, you know, solid content around that. And then if there's like two or three key questions, people ask having a buyer's guide that goes into like a lot of detail on that question. For example, I remember in the early days, one of our clients, uh, this guy, Dan, uh, still a client of ours. Um, he sells golf cart chargers. Uh, and in the early days, uh, you know, which charger should I get for my golf cart was like a super common question. Cause it's not as simple as you would think where it's like, this is your golf cart. This is your charger. Like there it is. It's, it's a million times more complicated than that. Um, but you know, he put together a, uh, a detailed guide that walked through, like, look at the plug. And then if the plug looks like this, it's one of these ones. And then look at the voltage, just like under the wheel, wheel, 
uh, wheel hub or whatever, like looking at random stuff, simplified the process and then said, this is your battery. Um, and he's now turned that into like a super streamlined buying process on his site, but it started out as like, this is a question people ask and, and he answered it. Nice. Golf cart battery replacements. That's yes. you, you can make it's money golf cart in chargers. any industry. I think oh, it was, chargers. It was chargers. Okay. <laughs> I got to get a golf cart first, but then I'll get a charger mm. for sure. Yeah. Uh, I got a guy. Nice. Cool. Well, any other tips on the CRO side? Cause I also wanted to pick your brain a little bit on, on team building and how you built such a large company. Yeah. Yeah. I think the last one is just searching and filtering functions, like making it easy to find products on your site. Um, you know, sidebar functionality is called layered navigation uh, is super important, uh, especially if you sell multiple types of products. Um, so enabling people to really filter products and search uh, through products well, tracking the success uh, rate of your actual search box on your site is important. And then again, uh, you know, what we do is we track when people are searching for products. And if somebody searches for a product on the site, whether it's through search or navigation, um, and they don't add something into their cart within a certain amount of time, we engage with that person on chat because they're clearly looking for something and they're clearly not finding the right stuff because they're not adding it to the cart. And so we engage with those people also. We invite them to chat and spark up that conversation. So yeah, I think those are the basics. You know, Streamline the checkout process, predict abandons and engage with people, have high and low level content, uh, and then you know, make it really easy to find products on your site. And you know, I know uh, we'll include this in the show notes, I know you mentioned, but um, I've got a guide that, uh, that we put together that digs into like specifics on this stuff, screenshots, and then you know, I think there's probably four or five other things that we dig into in that guide, uh, CRO guide. Um, but we'll publish that at, uh, at helpflow.net slash turnkey guide, uh, helpflow.net slash turnkey guide. Uh, and that'll dig into a lot more details because some of this stuff, it's through audio. It's a little hard to envision like the navigation and stuff. This, this guide has a lot more content for you. Nice. Yeah. Thanks for putting that together. Yeah. I bet that would be, if it's just like a checklist, like, Oh, I'm missing that. And I have that, then that'll be uh, probably easy for a lot of people. Cool. Definitely. Nice. So yeah, let's change gears. And so, I mean, you've built a pretty large company with a pretty large team in a you know relatively short period of time. So, you know, I know you're very systems minded and systems oriented and, and very well organized uh, from what I've gathered. But um, you know, how did you sort of get to this point where you've got that big team and company and everything seems to be pretty dialed in? Yeah, I mean, uh, part of it is we focus on a fairly narrow service. Um, which has been hard for me as an entrepreneur, because as an entrepreneur, like I see so many opportunities, I'm like, oh, we could do this, we could do that, we could do these other things. Um, but at the end of the day, like what we're best in the world at is live chat sales teams for e-commerce stores, not customer service, not email tickets, not phone support, not all these other things. Um, live chat sales teams for e-commerce stores, that's it. Uh, and we crush it at that. And so that's part of, you know, what's made us successful is just focusing uh, on that service. Because when you focus on just, you know, a narrow service and be best in the world, it, uh, it simplifies all the process development and the hiring that you need to do. And like all these things, because you're hiring for this narrow thing. Um, we do a, a lot of it now, uh, but it's a fairly narrow scope of what we do. Um, and so we're able to, um, you know, not have to create a ton of complexity in our business. We can just focus on, on scale. Um, so that's one piece is focus. I think another part is, you know, from day one, uh, focused on, I was focused on building a solid team. Um, I had had businesses before this where like I was the, the magician behind the scenes or something or the main client contact. And like it, the business only gets to a certain point when you do that. Um, and so from day one in this business, like I really wanted to build, you know, a solid team, uh, to build something big together. Um, and so, you know, gradually hired people to run different parts of the business. And, you know, at this point, basically the whole business is super, super dialed in. Um, you know, I had sales and marketing still, but basically everything else has, you know, a super experienced leader that's running that whole process. Um, you know, we've got our, our operations leader, uh, client success manager, quality department. Like we've got all the departments built out. I've got an org chart on the wall right there. Um, and so I think that's been the key is just focus and, uh, and, uh, getting a great team in place. Yeah. It makes it sound pretty easy, but, uh, I know it's <laughs> not as easy as it sounds. It's been five there, years. So okay. it's not five super years. easy. <laughs> <laughs> so what about for someone that's say, 
only at the point where maybe they have, you know, one or two people on their team. So it's a pretty small shop. Where would you recommend for them to start building, you know, not, not having to build out a whole big org chart, but where, where's like a good place to focus to start? I think a big thing is probably, um, probably sales and marketing, um, getting the revenue engine nailed, uh, in the early days, because when you have a growing client base and like clients coming in, like you can hire people, you have budget, you know, what needs to happen. You know, when you're onboarding a lot of clients, you start to see patterns between those clients. Um, so I mentioned we've been in business for five years. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't nail the growth engine, uh, at different phases well enough. Uh, in the early days, we nailed it. I got us to a certain point. Then we kind of went through a plateau and we're figuring a lot of things out. Um, and, you know, then we basically got it up and running again, uh, really strong to start scaling. Um, so if there's one thing I would say, I think it'd be focused on making sure you have a revenue engine uh, in the business. Because when you have a revenue engine, like everything else is kind of easier to solve. Yeah, no, that really helps simplify it. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, so let's like kind of wrap this down here. So what are kind of just some simple main takeaways that people could go take action on right now in their business? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one is, you know, use live chat. Um, I know I'm biased, but like that doesn't mean use us for live chat. You know, we're, we're uh, you know, good fit for certain types of stores, but every store uh, should have live chat, even if it's run by the owner, if you're a small shop at this point. Um, because that's going to give you so much insight into what's happening on the site and where people get confused. And so number one is use live chat and make sure you have invites set up to invite people to chat, make it really, really simple uh, for people to chat with you and engage with them. Um, that's number one, periodically look at those chats, um, you know, in retrospect, look at them and see what some of the trends are. Like, what are the questions people are asking? What are people getting hung up on? And, you know, make sure you address those things. Um, and then the third thing when it comes to CRO is take those trends that you're seeing in the chat and then make changes to your site. Like if people get confused about certain things in the checkout process, uh, change your checkout process to fit that. Um, so again, like that conversion guide that, that, uh, we put together, we'll kind of dig into like the high level, uh, you know, the broad range of things that we've talked about today. Um, but I think the most important part is, you know, use live chat, um, because it's going to give you insight to, to drive conversions. Um, and I know we've worked together on a lot of different client sites. Um, you know, we're, we can do a strategy call with anybody that's listening to the podcast. If you go to helpflow.net, um, check that out. Um, it'll kind of dig into how our service works. Um, and then there'll be a link to book a strategy call, um, where, you know, we'll really just dig into some of the data on your site and, you know, see how you could use live chat well. And, um, I've always said this, uh, to you, Jeff behind the scenes, but I'll say it here publicly. Like there, there's no big sales pitch or like high pressure or limited time offer or something, uh, for our service. Um, we've been doing it long enough where we know who it works for and who it's a fit for and who it can be a home run for. Uh, and on those strategy calls, we really just dig into that. Uh, so whether you work with us or not, um, you'll get a ton of value out of those calls. And so, um, you know, feel free to book that, uh, book that at helpflow.net. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks, John. And uh, where can people find you or should they just go to go over to your guys' website? Yeah, probably the website's best. Um, you know, the strategy calls, some of those go to me, some of those go to our team. Um, but for anybody that books through this, I'm happy to do those calls together. Uh, and then we're starting to put out a lot more content on the site also. So feel free to dig into the blog to kind of learn more about you know, how to use live chat in different ways and conversion insights that we've seen. But yeah, helpflow.net is probably the best bet. And we will be, uh, we will be uh, moving that to helpflow.com soon. If you go to helpflow.com or helpflow.net, it's all the same at this point. Um, but I know you've heard me say uh, both versions throughout. So helpflow.net is the best place to go for now. Sounds good. Well, thanks for sharing the tips today, John. And uh, yeah, catch you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate it. So a big thanks to John Tucker for coming on our show. He gave us a free uh, e-commerce optimization conversion guide over at helpflow.net slash turnkey guide. One word, turnkey guide. So thanks for John putting that together and for sharing those tips today. And we hope that you enjoyed that video. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you don't miss any of the updates that we're always sharing here about what's working on Amazon. If you're selling on Amazon, we're posting the latest updates and the latest strategies that are working today. So don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm.